River Shannon, a silver thread of water that flows from the heart of Ireland into the Western Seas. And for as long as man can remember, the answer to a fisherman's prayer. Here, the mighty salmon run, and the roach, the bream, the kingly pike, and many, many others. Man's ingenuity against the not inconsiderable cunning of the fish. A feather or two and a hank of hair. What doughty fighters they have brought to book. John Enright of Castle Connell is the artist. On Shannon Shores, they call this deceiver a yellow Hairy Mary. Or, as some insist, a better lure still, the live mayfly itself, there for the picking on the riverside. Let's hope they live a merry life, these little fellows, because they live for just one day. Less than that with voracious salmon or trout about. Beneath the Shannon's placid surface, the river swarms with fish, a paradise indeed for any sportsman. Records show that about 70,000 sports anglers come to Ireland every year. While trout and coarse fishing is free, a salmon rod license costs as little as one pound a week or four pounds a year, which must surely be the least outlay for the greatest enjoyment in any sport. Waiting invitingly for visitors and specially built for tourists are the thatched cottages at Whitegate by the Shannon. A hired live-in cruiser takes this German family for a fishing trip up the Shannon. A river uncrowded and more important in this industrial century, unpolluted. There's no hurry on this lovely stretch of water. Time means nothing. Well, they've come all the way from Germany to fish, so they'd better get down to it. This is a big one. A pike, a monster, and he didn't get away. Yes, the lovely Shannon swarms with fish, but it wasn't always so. Something called progress almost drove the salmon back into the sea forever. Like other rivers, the Shannon was tapped for power, and the huge hydroelectric complexes shattered the natural cycle of life and almost killed off the salmon. Fortunately, the Irish Electricity Authority, who controls these waters, acted in time. Large fish hatcheries were developed and expanded, like the salmon and trout rearing stations on the River Lee and Shannon. In the beginning, the eggs were hatched and the young fry released into the river. But mortality was as high as 90%. The solution was to rear the fish to smolt stage and stock the rivers with young salmon and trout. Nature took over from there successfully, as nature usually does. Island salmon, certainly those in the Shannon, are given film star treatment. Workmen level last year's spawning beds in anticipation of the shoal's instinctive drive upriver in the autumn. At Kana in Connemara, the young smolts, those salmon ready for the big migration, are being reared in the Atlantic itself. Transported from the hatcheries in oxygen containers, they're transferred to floating cages in the sea. Ancient legend gives the salmon great wisdom and even supernatural powers. For, of course, this is Ireland, where even the most commercial of enterprises has a little poetry in it somewhere. The salmon's migration is as mysterious as it is prodigious. 
Out of the warm Shannon estuary, the huge shoal heads deep into the Atlantic to icy Newfoundland, and then by some miracle of navigation, back to the Shannon and surge upriver to spawn. At the Ardner Crusher hydro station, the migrating salmon are persuaded up through the fish pass, lifted a hundred feet over the dam, and they're on their way to the breeding grounds. Because of the prompt hatchery program, salmon stocks are growing. Here, the electric counter recorded up to 8,000 fully grown salmon traversing the fish pass, and up to 20,000 crossing the weir at Thomond in County Limerick, over twice the number counted 15 years ago. It's at Thomond Weir that fish destined for marketing are trapped. By statutory control, only 28% of the total fish passing through may be taken for marketing. Humanely, the fish are electrocuted. Not only quick and painless, it leaves no marks. Next step, the processing shed. Cleanliness is next to godliness, a point the salmon wouldn't appreciate. Ireland salmon exports reach into the markets of England, France and Germany. Salmon selected for smoking down go through a finely scheduled process. The fuel used is not just ordinary wood, only new oak sawdust is considered suitable. After six hours in the kiln, the smoked salmon are ready for the next stage of treatment. Doesn't that give you an appetite? Final exotic touch. Those gourmet's delights are polished in their own oil. And it all comes back to a sunny day, a quiet day on the banks of the Shannon, with nothing to do but wait for the salmon, those lovely leaping salmon, to throw themselves on your life. It can't be a bad way to spend a holiday.